Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation. Today we are going to see how to do the modeling of the BH curve of a magnetic material. So in this presentation we will see the introduction first, then we will show how to gather the data from the manufacturer's data sheet. We will see how to state the problem. We will show how to solve the problem using WinPython, which is our favorite mathematical package. And we will see along this presentation an example for the modeling of N49 material. This presentation is an excerpt of my book entitled Inductors, Variable and Controllable, available from Amazon KDP. So if you are interested in this topic, please take a look at this book. In a previous video, Power Electronics number 5, Spice modeling of magnetic devices, we saw how to use LT Spice to do the modeling of magnetic elements, inductors and transformers. This is a schematic of one of the circuits that we saw in this video. This is the model corresponding to an inductor. We have the winding here. Here we have the element that models the reluctance of the core. We call this element a reluctor. And this element here models the behavior of the air gap, as we have seen in this previous video. In the case of the core, we have the different parameters here that are used to model the N87 material. So today we are going to see how to obtain these values for other magnetic materials from the manufacturer's datasheet. Just a quick revisiting of the modeling of the reluctance of the material. We know that the reluctance is the length of the magnetic material divided by the permeability times the cross-sectional area of our material. The permeability that we call the total permeability is the relationship between the magnetic flux density and the magnetic field intensity, as we can see here. And we saw that in order to model this permeability, we use this expression here, for which we have three different parameters, K1, K2, and K3. This is called the Brower's fitting. So in order to do the modeling, we have to implement this equation into LTSPICE to model our reluctor. And we do this, as we have seen in the previous video, using this behavioral voltage source, which depends on the different parameters. With this current source, we generate the value of the magnetic flux density. And with this other current source, we generate the value of the total permeability. We have seen this in this previous video, Power Electronics number 5, so if you want to have more information, please take a look at this video. So today we are going to see how to do the modeling of this material, N49, it's a manganese zinc material. The saturation level is around 400 millitesla. The material is intended to operate between 300 kilohertz and 1000 kilohertz, so 1 megahertz. And here we have some information related to the losses. And here we have the BH curve from the data sheet. In this case, we have selected it operating at 25 degrees of temperature, but we can do the same process at any other temperature. The next step is to take the figure corresponding to the BH curve and copy it on our favorite drawing software. I have used here Paint. So here in this software, we can use the cursor and measure each point in pixels. So from this information, we can get the equivalence as it is shown here. This is the zero, 0 point, 
So we can measure, for example, that at this point, which corresponds to this value in pixels, we have 200 amperes per meter. And at this point here, which corresponds to these other coordinates in pixels, we know that this distance here corresponds to 100 millitesla. So we have at the end this equivalence between the unit corresponding to ampere per meter and pixels and also between millitesla and pixels. Let's see very quickly this in the software. I can go to the figure and here at the bottom we can see the coordinates of the different points so we can also do a zoom and measure with good accuracy the different points. What I have done is to measure this point here and this point here and then take the middle point corresponding to the BH curve and same thing in the other point. So at this level I measure this point here and this point here and take the middle point between them. So in this way we can obtain a table like this from the graphic in which we are showing the value of the magnetic flux density in pixels and the value of the magnetic field intensity also in pixels. And now we have to transform these values into the equivalent values in millitesla and amperes per meter. And now we have all the information. So we know the origin in pixels. We know the factors of transformation, so we can do a linear transformation from the information in pixels and get the information of B in millitesla and H in ampere per meter. So here we have the results and here we have the graphic corresponding to the measurements that we have gotten from the datasheet. Now we are going to model this characteristic using the Brouwer's fitting. So we say that the total permeability, which is the ratio B over H, follows this expression here. We have three unknowns, K1, K2 and K3. So we have to establish a system of equations and solve for these three parameters. We are going to take three points from the characteristic. We usually take one point at the beginning of the characteristic, then another one around the knee of the BH curve, and finally a third one after the knee of the BH curve. And here we can see the way to solve this system using WinPython. Here we have the arrays corresponding to the magnetic field intensity and to the magnetic field density. We have a total of 18 points. From these arrays we select three points, one below the knee of the BH curve, we call this X. We are selecting another one close to the knee of the BH curve, which is point Y. And the last one after the knee of the BH curve, which we have called SIT. We are printing the three points for information. We define here our set of equations and our three unknowns. And then we use the F-solve function with this value for the initial guess. And if everything goes well, then we can print the results and use these results to plot the curve, the BH curve, using the expression of the total permeability times the magnetic field density. This gives the magnetic field intensity. And then here we are calculating the errors between the points obtained from the data sheets and the equivalent points obtained with our approximation. So here we are plotting the BH curve showing both the data and the fitting. And here we are plotting the error that we are getting at each point. So finally, let's see how the program works 
in WinPython. Here we have the script as we have just seen. So now we can run the script and see the results. Here we can see the three points that we have selected and these are the Brower's fitting coefficients that we get. These are the values of k1, k2 and k3. If we go to plots, then we can see first the VH curve. Here we have the magnetic field intensity, H, and here we have the magnetic flux density. So in red we have the original points, and in green we have our Brower's fitting. So if we go to the error, we can see here the relative error in percentage. So we can see how the error is something around 20% minus 20%, which is not bad. We can try here maybe to select other values here for the points that we use to solve the system of equations. For example, we can select here two and try to run it away to see if we can decrease the error, but usually we are not going to get better results. Maybe this one here we have a lower value for this one and so on. So finally we get these three values for the Brower's fitting of our N49 material. So finally summarizing we have obtained the Brower's fitting coefficients for M49 material, which are those shown here. So we can now use these coefficients in these parameters here of our reductor, and then we can simulate our inductors, variable inductors and transformers using this new material. Well, this concludes this presentation today. I hope this is useful for you. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.